So um, now, and in your problems, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have three different types of co uh, inequalities, compound inequalities. You're going to have ones that are um, already joined, like the one I did before. You're going to have ones that are going to look like this, but just simply have your join statement, your conjoining statement, which would be and. And then you're going to have ones that are just going to have the statement or. So the, the reason why I did the one where they're together is I just want you guys to understand that you can break those apart into an and statement. Because really, we're only dealing with and and or statements. But there's two representations for and. Um, so when looking at this problem, um, all we're simply going to do is solve them separately. So I'll add 5 here. Add 5. Negative 3x is less than or equal to 15. Divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. Please remember, whenever you multiply or divide by a negative number, x is greater than or equal to negative 5. Right? Jacob, make sure you flip that sign. It's going to happen. I'm telling you. Over here, we go ahead and solve. So I subtract 8. Subtract 8. 2x is less than or equal to a negative 24. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. x is less than or equal to a negative 12. Okay. Notice on this one, I didn't flip the sign. Some people say, oh, well, you're dividing you know, into a negative number. That's OK. But notice what my divisor is. Here it's positive, so I never flip the sign. Here my divisor is negative, so that's why I had to flip the sign. All right. Now we need to create a number line that's going to contain negative 5 and uh, negative 12. So I'll put 0 over here, negative 1, negative 2. All right, so again, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do what we know how to do. We're going to go to our two points and make dots there. So I have negative 5 and negative 12. All right. Um, in this case, I'm going to use test points rather than going to the left or to the right, because I think negatives always make people get people confused. So I'm going to use test points. Um, first of all, though, we don't need to use test points for these, because we can look at the inequality symbol. Are both of these a part of the solution? Are they closed or open? Close, because they're, great, they're equal to, greater than equal to or less than or equal to. So we can close them. We can also use test points. Now, to use test points, again, what I'm looking for is just picking a point to the left and to the right and plugging that point in for x. So negative 14 is greater than or equal to negative 5, or negative 10 is greater than or equal to negative 5. And again, one of the statements is going to be true. One of the statements is going to be false. And please just remember, when thinking about negatives, think of negatives as money you owe somebody. All right? So if you have how much, you know, what is more? If you owe somebody $14, do you have more money than if you owe them 5 No. If you owe, wait a minute, what did I do? You did it with 5, not 12. Yeah, 12. Oh, I did 12, OK. <laughs> Here, sorry about that. Negative 14 is less than or equal to negative 12, or negative 10 is less than or equal to negative 12. So if you owe somebody $14, is, do you have more money or less money than if you owe them 12? You'd have less money. So is that true or false? That is true. If you owe somebody $14, you have less money than if you owe them $12. Right? If you owe them $10, you do not have less money than if you owe them 12. So 14 is true, 10 is false. So therefore, my graph is going to go to the left. Over here, we'll do our two points. I'll pick 7 and 3. Negative 7 is greater than or equal to uh, negative 5. And negative 3 is greater than or equal to negative 5. Again, what the states is, if you owe somebody $7, do you have more or less money if, than if you owed them $5? And obviously, you'd have less money if you owed them 7 right? So 7 is not greater than. It's, it's uh, less than. So that's false. But if you owe somebody $3, compared, is that greater than owing them? Uh, do you have more money than if you owed them $5? Yes. So this is true. That's false. So you shade to the other one. Okay. So just remember OR statements, ladies and gentlemen. We're not looking for the intersection. All right. When we're dealing with OR statements, Katie, we're just looking to graphing both of the graphs separately. All right. Not looking for the intersection. All right. 
pep rally or not, 